Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Director of Body Imbalance and Peat Blood Pressure. Today I'm going to talk about blood tests. Have you been to the doctors, you've had a blood test, you've had the results back and the doctor said there's nothing wrong, but yet you are feeling lousy or you're trying to figure out well, what's the cause of my high blood pressure, for instance. Well, the thing is, the normal blood test results that come back as normal and there's nothing wrong often hold a huge amount of information. And that's because basically normal does not mean the same as healthy. So today I'm going to go through some of the terms and you may have seen these RBC, MCV, HB, MH, MCH and MCHC and so I'm going to tell you a bit, a bit about what they mean so you can actually start interpreting them and understanding your own blood test. And I'm going to do a series of these um, inspired by uh, my own mentor and somebody else um, who has already released some of this on YouTube um, and so I know that I'm allowed to release this information. It's not proprietary um, but I would like to uh, thank the people before me that have put all this work together. Um, so there's uh, Dr Kylie, thank you very much Dr Kylie, but the guy I really learned from, um, the gentleman I read, Dr Brian Walsh, who's uh, done a lot of hard research and so I'm not going to go into all the details because um, it wouldn't be fair and also I don't want to encourage people to start taking action without actually really having a thorough analysis but I'll go through the simple stuff that I think is okay to start thinking about and talking about yourself. So let's see the problem is that the, the blood test the ranges that you may have seen so basically so I've removed uh, the name oh the doctor's name is on there so I'll remove the doctor's name for you as well okay the doctor's name so basically so a lot of people have probably seen something like this you've got the normal ranges over here and oh there's nothing wrong although quite often on blood tests I'll actually have if this was printed in color there'd actually be where there's an exclamation mark it'll be in red and yet at the top it says no action required and that's because very often there's nothing that there's no medicine that treats some of these things when they're out of the normal range anyway and so there's just like oh well, that's normal or there's nothing to do and um, which is actually really dangerous um, so what I'm going to, so the problem is that the, most of the people going to doctors and getting blood tests are sick and then they're going to the lab and what the, do, the lab does is it basically has all these results from all these millions of sick people and then it says well what we're going to do is we're going to say well most of the results came in here the extremes are over here so these are the ones that are out of normal this is all normal but however that's not actually the same as comparing sick people's blood tests to people with no symptoms, no health problems whatsoever, what do their blood tests say? And there's been a lot of science that has been done, a lot of research showing that the normal ranges that companies are using, which is based and all the labs are using, which is based on sick people, is actually really dangerous because it's not the same as healthy. And there is actually a lot of science showing what the truly healthy ranges should be, or at least can really help us understand what's really wrong with you and what's really going on. Um, and they're very often not in the middle, though some of them are in the middle of these ranges um, or close enough. So I'm going to go through that and, um, and then hopefully you're going to start understanding, ah, what can I do? So let's start with the RBC, which is red blood count, which is the total number of red blood cells. Now the normal range of total white blood, red blood cells um, is between 3.8 and 5.4 but pretty much um, if it's in the high fours or under four or low fours um, it's pretty much too high or too low so if your red blood cell count is like 4.1 or under four it's too low if it's five it's too high um, and so if it's too low it means you're not making enough red blood cells so if you're not making enough red blood cells you can't deliver oxygen to your brain, for instance, and you can't deliver oxygen to your muscles, to your liver. And so it means that these systems won't work very well. But also if you can't deliver oxygen to your brain because you haven't got enough red blood cells, then perhaps your heart rate might go up or perhaps your blood pressure might go up or perhaps something else might happen that goes wrong. And if you've got too many red blood cells, perhaps it's harder for your body to pump all this mass of red blood cells around. Maybe it's too thick your blood and that causes high blood pressure, for instance. But either way, there's causes behind whether it's too high or too low. Both can actually be nutritional deficiencies. So the next one is MCV. This is where we do get into some, some deficiencies. 
mean cell volume. This is how big are your, are your red blood cells, okay? How big are your red blood cells? Yeah, they're not gonna be that big, okay? And ideally, okay, and the range, the normal range for the size of your red blood cells is um, from 79 to 98, whereas really it should be sort of 80 to 90 is pretty much it. Um, so basically, if your red blood cells are above 90, it's too big. If it's 80 or below, it's, it is too low. Um, now, if your red blood cells are too big, it's very often because of a lack of B12 or a lack of B9, which is folate. Okay. Now, if your red blood cells are too small, there's a number of things that could be like iron, but B6, okay, is of course for your red blood cells to be too small. And very often, so this is where it gets complicated. So if, you, if, you're, if your mean cell volume is too big, then you've probably got one set of deficiencies. If it's too small, you've probably got another set of deficiencies. However, if you're deficient in both B12 and folate, and also B6 and some other things, so and very often if people have got one set of B deficiencies, they might have a set of another. And so what it means is you're gonna make some red blood cells that are too big and some that are too small, but it means your MCV can be smack bang in the middle normal. Because the mean cell volume is just looking at the average. So there's something that can actually help you differentiate between the two, which is almost always ignored, and that's called your R D R T W, your red cell distribution width, which basically gives you an estimate of, okay, what's the smallest ones and what's the biggest ones. And so that's called the distribution width. Like, so what is the difference in size between the biggest and the smallest? And this number should be under 13%. If it's above 13%, it's related to increased cardiovascular disease risks and a lot of other risks. And so if you've got an MCV that's a slap bang in the middle, but your RDW, which the normal range is up to 16, but it should be 13. If it's over 13, then we know that you're probably going to have, sometimes you're going to be lacking B6 or some other nutrients, sometimes you're going to be lacking B12, and so your red blood cells are all over the place. And so also if your, M if your MCV is on the high range, but this is large, then we know that you're definitely going in and out of deficiencies of more B12, for instance. So... MCV and RDW together can really tell you a lot if they're out of range or if one of them's out of range, then we know there's a problem. Now, one of the most important things in here is hemoglobin, um, which is your ability to carry oxygen. So you could have completely normal red blood cells of a completely normal size with the right red cell distribution width, um, but you might not have very much hemoglobin. Um, and you may not have very much hemoglobin in your cells, which is MCH, which is your mean cell hemoglobin, which is your hemoglobin concentration, basically. Mean cell hemoglobin, which is how much HB you've got in your cells. Okay, and you might actually have enough. But your mean cell hemoglobin concentration is how concentrated is the hemoglobin. So basically, if you've got a really big red blood cell, you may have enough hemoglobin to do the job, but the concentration will be low. Um, and these can all help tell you what else is in your red blood cell as well, whether it's swelling with water when you look at some other things as well. So these things can be very important. Now, if they're all generally on the, apart from RDW, okay, RDW is under 13%, but basically if these, the red blood cells, the MCH, the MCHC, these are on the low side of the normal range, and it's certainly towards the bottom, then you're probably lacking in iron, but not enough for it to be full on iron deficiency. But you could also be lacking B6 and some other nutrients as well. If they're all on the high side um, of normal, then it's nearly always like a whole range of B vitamins and what are called methylating agents. And when these are all high, and you're, you're possibly lacking lots of methylating agents, which is certain forms of the B vitamins, then it may also be that you're going to be very high in something called homocysteine, which is something your body breaks down um, from, from proteins. And if your homocysteine levels are high, this is related to increased heart disease, dementias, arthritis, pain, all sorts of things. And homocysteine is more linked to heart disease than cholesterol problems, but there's no drug that lowers it, so doctors very rarely test for homocysteine. What lowers homocysteine? 
B vitamins and methylating agents. And so it's likely that your blood tests can actually give you a hint as to what's the real cause of your health problems that can then be fixed so you don't then need the medication. So I hope you found this useful, basically. Um, again, don't rush out and go and try and self-diagnose everything, but basically taking a multivitamin mineral uh, can often be a good thing to do, but make sure that none of the nutrients that are in it are going to be interacting with any medication that you're on. Uh, and always seek some healthcare provider advice before doing anything radical. But hopefully that's not going to make you do anything radical because you're going to increase your leafy greens to get more folate. You're going to increase maybe some good quality meat, so grass-fed beef to increase your B12 and also help B6 and iron as well. So this is where a wholesome, balanced diet can come in very handy for fixing your underlying problems. And we know that food is medicine when it's done properly. So if you do want some help specifically and want looking at the whole range of all the different figures that are out there, then by all means reach out to the Beat Blood Pressure or BodyandBalanceUK.com and you can contact me, Chris Pickard, at uh, yeah, Body and Balance in Hertfordshire, 01707 662 704. And I'll probably put some contact details in the description below. Um, as ever, live long and prosper because good to be geeky and live with magnificent health.